I'm going to change tool bits. This one cuts from left to right because I really don't need to deal with this part here. I just need to cut a little bit over here. Each time we cut, we back it off and check because we want this to be nice and snug. Actually, that's almost got it. One little tiny cut, and I think we got it here. Just do an eighth of a turn. That's good. A little bit loose. And loose is not a problem because we can just work in a couple of little veneers or shims to make that really solid. I just look for a little place where I can shove in a little bit of veneer. It's very tight now. The indexing jig has two parts. The first part has a pin which is located in such a way as to grab those notches. And the second part of the indexing jig has a pin that is driven forward into the rim. I'm marking the spot where the bracket shoe hole should go. One of the difficulties in turning the inside of the rim is getting enough reach with your cutting tool. So I've employed a machinist boring bar and a special tool holder to reach way inside the rim. As you can see, the two together have quite a reach. getting very close to final dimension, so I'm just taking very small cuts. As you can see, the boring bar did an excellent job. All that remains now is a little sanding, and this rim will be ready to take off the lathe. This rim is actually deeper than it needs to be. We're going to be cutting it about here, parting it off of our faceplate. Oftentimes, if you're making parts on a lathe, you'll part your pieces off at high speed, but I prefer using a router and that way I can turn the rim by hand at slow speed so that when it does part, it doesn't come flying off the lathe at high speed.
we can simply break off these shreds of wood here and we can clean up the bottom of this rim in our next step. The method I originally used for dealing with the bottom edge of the rim is called a collet. These are nice because you can make them yourself and you just place the rim upside down inside your collet, mount it on the lathe, and then you can turn it again and deal with the bottom edge. Since then I invested in a chuck with expanding jaws. It's a more expensive solution, but it works very well. This is a chuck with expanding jaws. You can take this key and turn it, and as you can see the jaws are expanding. These are rubber feet that can attach at various places. And if I were putting a lot of stress on my rim, I would definitely use more than these rubber feet. I would make what are called false jaws. But as I'm just going to sand the bottom, I think these rubber feet are enough to take care of it. Nice and smooth. I've also been able to give it a slight rounded profile. Now we can take our rim off of the chuck. And we're ready to drill our bracket shoe holes. Up till now we've been talking about faceplate turning, but a much more convenient way to turn your rims is with the expanding jaw chuck. Let's start by talking about the parts of the expanding jaw chuck. This is the talon chuck made by One Way in Canada. One nice thing about it is you can use these adapters to suit any lathe that you might have. And this is how it comes straight out of the box. It has pretty small jaws for turning bowls and such, but these can be replaced with what are called jumbo jaws. Now one great feature that makes an expanding jaw chuck is that as you turn the key, you can see you can expand and contract the jaws. Now I'm going to take my tool and take off the original jaws and put on the jumbo jaws. In reality, there are two screws per jaw, but I took out one just to speed things up. All right, now we've taken off the original set of jaws, and this part alone is called the body. You can actually buy the body of the chuck separately, and um, I invested in the kit because I'll show you later. It comes with some handy attachments. This is part of the set of jumbo jaws, and they go exactly where the original set of jaws goes and use the same screws. Putting in the last screw. There you have it. 
This is the jumbo jaw set installed on the body. As I mentioned before, these slots are handy because they are the means by which we can mount our false jaws. These are false jaws that I made out of poplar. Um, there are two types. This type is meant to grab the outside of the rim so that you can turn the inside. And this type grabs the inside of the rim when you're turning the outside of the rim. Each one of these has brass threaded inserts so that I can use bolts to bolt them to the false to the uh, jumbo jaws. What I'm showing you now is how the false jaws bolt onto the jumbo jaws. They just bolt in with these screws and after you have them all in place, it looks sort of like this. Now let's talk about how to make false jaws. The false jaws I use are made out of poplar in convenient sizes that you can buy at most hardware stores. Here we have one and a half by one and a half. This is about three feet long. That's plenty for the project. And about two four footers of one and a half by three quarters. I've got all my parts cut off for the soft jaws. You'll notice that the pattern for drilling on the inside and outside jaws are different. I'll post plans on the website so you don't have to take notes. These are about four inches long. These are blocks about one and an eighth inch long. I'm drilling seven sixteenth inch holes so I can put my brass inserts into the base of the false jaws. I've got my depth gauge set so I don't drill all the way through. I've got all my holes drilled. Now it's time for us to put the brass inserts into the holes. This tool helps you get the brass insert nice and straight. You want to make sure it goes below the surface.